This is a podcast where real doctors discuss fake medical emergencies. That means that unless you're hallucinating after a visit to your dentist, Dr. Yap, this podcast is not medical advice. If you need medical advice or medical care, please contact your doctor. Also, just as a heads up, this episode deals with things like infestations and feces. So it's a great episode, but it might not be a great episode for like your lunch hour. Hi, everybody. I'm Jackson Payne. I'm Johnny Kolosinski. You might remember me from such podcast as Philadelphia Cheese Steak Review, a review of delicious cheese steak sandwiches. It's so many cheese steaks before this. Yeah, that is in honor of the presidential election, which was announced, uh, which was called on the day that we're recording this. Yes. Uh, fun fact, it's not a Philadelphia cheese steak sandwich unless you eat it in Philadelphia. No. It's just a sparkling sandwich. Shut up. <laughs> This is Hi Everybody, a Bad Medicine podcast. Every week we talk about what Hollywood gets right and wrong about medicine and how the body works. You can find this podcast online at Hi Everybody MD on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, and the Twitters, or at www.hieverybodymd.com. Or you can call us at 1530-DOCTORB. That's 1530-D-O-C-T-O-R-B, which is the best letter for today. Because we're talking about buttworms in Bob's Burgers. Yeah. So many bees. <clears throat> so many. And Biden. Woo! And Biden. Not a politics podcast. No. Before we get into the episode, just want to say thank you and hello to everyone who found us on Reddit recently. Uh, we got a great reception for our midsummer episode in the A24 subreddit. So thank you folks who subscribed and are listening. And if you have any feedback, have any questions, have any suggestions, give us a call at 530-DOCTORB, where the B stands for... Bloomhouse films, which are kind of like A24 films. That's probably the next thing we'll deal with, I think, is some Bloomhouse films. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple. All right. Uh, but this week we are discussing uh, Bob's Burgers uh, Season 11, Episode 12, Worms of Endearment. Episode 2. Episode 2. I am reading off my own notes, which <laughs> suck. Uh, season 11, Episode 2, uh, Worms of Endearment. Yes. Jackson, it's pretty obvious why you chose this episode, but why are we covering this episode? Well, it deals with something that I actually see in the emergency room way more than you would think. And it's the thing that freaks a lot of parents out because um, they'll, they'll look at their kid and they go, there's something crawling out of their butt. And that is a good good segue into this episode, I would say. I'm not a doctor. Mm -hmm. That sounds bad. I mean, so pinworms are pretty common. Um, it's I was looking up stats, so 20% of all kids get it. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, so one in five kids will have pinworms at some point in their life. A lot of times it could be asymptomatic. But the craziest part is if it's in a school and there's an outbreak, your chances of getting it is one in two. Wow. Yeah. So kids. So are, everybody wear your butt masks is what I'm hearing. I mean, you jokingly, yes, mainly because you know how you know how in the beginning of this whole outbreak, we're like, don't touch your face because that's mm -hmm. how you get it spread. So the most common way that pinworms are spread is fecal oral. I think we've uh, done a talk about fecal oral before. No, because thank goodness we've not covered Wequiem for a dream. Ooh. Or train spotting. Or train spotting. Yep. But fecal oral is basically if you go to the bathroom, you don't wash your hands well, and then you eat, that's how you get it. <laughs> or you scratch <laughs> and you eat. That's how you get it. So fecal oral, that's a very common mode of transmission for a lot of diseases like hepatitis, um, any kind of diarrheal illness, uh, any kind of stomach flu, um, food poisoning. You know, that's one way you can get food poisoning too is if the person who was making your food went to the bathroom and didn't follow that sign in the bathroom that says <laughs> all employees must wash hands. That's how you get it. Uh, but, tangent. Uh, one of our favorite restaurants in San Diego has, along with that sign, a vegan... Death Metal Vegan Restaurant in San Diego called Kindred mm -hmm. also has a sign saying all employees must carve the Slayer symbol into their arms before I mean, returning to work. That's how you prevent uh, pinworms. Yeah. Yeah. But this episode starts out with Linda going to her, and I love the term, vaginacologist, which is just her OB, OB gyne doctor. Um, but it all starts with them kind of going on off on this tangent that was pretty big when I was growing up. I think like in grade school that... Kids that listen to classical music tend to be smarter. Right. I'm not sure if that's a real thing or not. I mean, it sounds like one of those goopy, mommy bloggy kind of parents magazine kind of situation. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there's 
there are studies that show that that is the case, and we don't have the specific numbers yeah, in front of us. Yeah, but it's all retrospective. It's I all think. exactly, and the kind of parents who are going to play Mozart for their babies or play, you know, have headphones on their on their stum- tummies while they're pregnant are Tums. also probably, uh, yeah, the, the medical term is tum. They are also probably the kind of parents who are going to take an active role in their kids' yeah. education. There's a lot of socioeconomic kind of factors that come into play. Like mm-hmm. These are more probably affluent or, you know, people who do their research and try to work harder to raise their kid. Not to mm-hmm. say that any, like yeah. all, not all parents would work hard for their kids. But know? people who have the time to, to the, be I would say actively more, involved in education. I'd say more in the the means as well yeah. is also like a big thing too. So like that kind of skews a lot of it too. So it's like a flawed kind of study situation, mm-hmm. but it's definitely a big thing where that's why you have those baby Einstein like mm-hmm. CDs. Yeah. And the baby when, Mozart. Like when those things were kind of yeah cool, like, you know, when CDs are cool, mm-hmm. that was like a big thing about that. But she tries to get Linda tries to get her whole family to go to the symphony to make her kids who are kind of dumb, which is proven fact mm-hmm. smarter. Which I feel like it's a little too late now. They're probably in the what, like, whatever twelve. Yeah, yeah they're 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 all like twelve trimester. <laughs> no, twelve trimester. That'd make that'd make them like four. Twelve times four. Twelve tri- trimester would make them three or four because there's three. I don't know. Trimester is a I, third I, of a pregnancy. If we've established any, not a math podcast. If we've established anything, I am terrible at math. And that is a fact beyond all means. But uh, Louise does bring up a fact that there's a pinworm pandemic going to school. Mm -hmm. And remember how I mentioned 50% of the kids might get it. Right. Right. And there was that whole song about Mr. Frond um, doing the hand washing song and inviting Mm -hmm. his friends soap in, which is important. Hand washing. I think if we've learned anything in the past few months, super, super important. Yeah. You got to do it for at least 20 seconds. It's very hard. 20 seconds is forever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, I mean, we'll be honest here. Not everyone can get to 20 seconds because it's really, really hard. But I think the point here is he did the song, but with, man, I'm saying but a lot. Um, (laughs) The biggest risk factor for transmission of pinworms is school. Mm -hmm. And it takes four to eight weeks for it to manifest. So by the time you've already noticed one person with it, there's already a lot of people with it. Okay. It's like an asymptomatic carrier situation. Which is, again, something we're suddenly much more familiar Correct. with than we were in 2019. Exactly. So you're getting a lot of kids that are already having the worms grow in their intestines ready to pop. Mm-hmm. And, oh, God. I will never forget seeing, I think my first patient I saw in the ED with pinworms, the mom goes, there's something crawling out of the butt. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. We look in the diaper area. And I just see this mass of like white little Medusa hair looking things just coming out. And I go, I know what that is. We're done. Let me leave now and finish <laughs> and wash my hands for like an hour. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Gene describes it as I saw something in my poop. I thought it was rice. But then I was like, does rice wiggle? I, I mean, it can look like that. But the I will say flex of rice. Yes. Um but pinworms themselves are very thin. They're mm-hmm. they're like a thicker hair almost, and they're definitely mobile. Okay. Do you know what one of the tests people do if they can't see the pinworms right away to diagnose it? No, I don't. Do you want to take a venture or a guess? Um, My doctor friends, the nurses probably know this, but... I mean, I, I'm assuming this is beyond just a wipe check? It is. Okay. It is. It does. Let me give you a hint. It uses office uh, supplies. A post-it note? You're close. Uh, scotch tape. Scotch tape? Yeah. So it's called the scotch tape test. You apply some tape right there, and then you wait to see what crawls out, and it'll just get stuck to the scotch tape. You pull off the scotch tape gently, and you'll see it attached. That's how you can make the diagnosis. I feel like this is our first episode that needs a content warning that isn't <laughs> we accidentally swore. But that is actually how we or how it is diagnosed in clinics at times, too, is a scotch tape test. Now, is it special, like, medical-grade scotch tape? That no. <laughs> you just go to your, like, desk and grab some, like, some scotch tape. And, and then don't return that to the desk. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. That, it's biohazard tape. Yeah, that's gross tape now. That goes straight into the red bin, which is <laughs> our special biohazard bin. So when Jean started having the itchiness, that pretty much what clenched it for Louise. She, <laughs> God, it's... Mm. Everyone gets really paranoid. And then this is like a very common phenomenon in the emergency department. When you say certain diagnoses, 
everyone starts feeling those symptoms. Yeah. Like bed bugs or scabies. Mm-hmm. You immediately get itchy. Like I am scratching right now because I just heard those words or lice. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's actually like one of my big phobias is like other than like seeing eye stuff on TV, mm-hmm. infestations like lice, fleas, pinworms now yeah. are like the thing that skeeve me out the most. Yeah. Because it's gross. It's mobile. It's something you can see. Like when you get sick with like a virus, you don't see it. Mm-hmm. So what you can't see doesn't bother you, right? Right. You know you feel the symptoms of it, but the fact that you can't see the organism, who cares? But the minute you kind of part someone's hair and you see stuff crawling around, immediately skeevy. Yeah. Um, same thing with pinworms. Like the fact that you can see something crawling around is super scary. And gross. It's like when you look in someone's ear and you find a cockroach kind of looking at you. You're, ah! like, you're like, oh, there it is. I'm going to go drown it with some lidocaine and take it out of it, the ear right now. Like, it's super uh, like super freaky. And I think that's, like, a big thing um, with whenever you get that kind of implantation of what illness is in your, around you. Mm-hmm. You start feeling those symptoms, too. And it's weird for Bob and Tina to get those symptoms, or at least the sensation, unless they were infected a while Bob ago. Bob and Tina are the parents. Bob is the parent. Tina's oh. the oldest daughter. Oh, sorry. Louise is the Dang other it. daughter. I'm so Linda, bad at that. Linda. Linda is the uh, the mom. But this is this goes to the fact that it takes four to eight weeks for incubation, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know why you get itchy? Because of the, because there are eggs hatching. No, it's partially because it's move. The eggs are implanted into the mucosa and that's that hatching movement causes it but also the worms crawling around is what causes itchiness so okay it's it's not that you have like this mass of worms in your intestine that are bursting out that's causing you to get itchy it's also because the fact that they're in the mucosal membrane hatching and then the act of them wiggling out oh like wiggling out through your skin is what causes a lot of itchiness Uh. yeah it's the most common parasitic infection in the world by far it's also like you, because like when you think parasitic, you think malaria and mm-hmm. whatnot, right? This is actually the most common one. Yeah. <laughs> this is the week that I'm announcing my retirement from this show. <laughs> what? What's your next job? Bottomless businessman. There we go. That's how Bob gets it. By the way, did you realize how? Do you remember how Gene got his pinworms in the first place? Yes. So Gene got his pinworms in a way that I think is probably remarkably feasible in an elementary school which is he had a tater tot in his pocket Mm -hmm. dropped it on the bathroom floor then somebody else handed it to him after coming out of the bathroom and then nommed on the tater tot yeah and i think the question there goes where did where are you most where are you more likely to get the the pinworms Mm -hmm. is it the ground or the hand it's the hand i'd say it's 50 50 yeah because when you poop it's not just a straight beeline straight into the the water. Right. There's the splash. Not just the splash, but it aerosolizes too. Potentially, there's always a sign. There's always a chance of aerosolization. I mean, it won't linger in the air, but those droplets will go to the ground eventually. And if you drop something in the ground in the bathroom and put it in your mouth, you're gonna get whatever's there. I mean, it's transmitted via the eggs. You're not eating like coal worms. Mm-hmm. You're just eating worm eggs. That's oh, it. that's that's so much better. I know, right? It, it's it's like caviar, but makes your butt itch. I mean that that is the best way to think about it. Um, what do the pinworms eat? Are they just eating your fecal matter? No, I don't believe so. I, that is actually something I've never thought about. Is what pinworms eat? Uh, I'm gonna look this up because I think everyone would want to know this because that sounds gross. Uh, what pinworms? Eat? I've never thought of that. I, I always thought it was like um, parasitic kind of they drink your blood or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so the pinworms, according to the Mayo Clinic, are quite happy to live in the mucus deb- uh, membrane and eat the debris left behind in the colon after most of the nutrients are extracted by the small intestine. So that the nicest way of saying that is, or I should say the, that is a very nice way to say it. Um, that basically says it eats poop. It, it eats it eats your poop and it eats you know skin or mucus membrane, which is essentially what, leftovers. So that's what a lot of poop is. It's bacteria. Mm-hmm. It's non digestible like cellulose and whatnot, water, uh, and then products of breakdown in your body. That's basically mm-hmm. what it is. Like your poop is brown because your blood broke down. 
Oh, yeah. Also, like, that's also why your pee is yellow, because that's your blood yeah. breakdown, too. This is a um, evacuation-heavy season for us. Has it been? Yeah, last week we were talking oh, about yeah. urea. Yeah, you're right. It has been very... Very bodily function. Yeah, it's, it's it's a brown and yellow season for us, <laughs> like a like a cheeseburger. Yeah, it's brown and yellow. Uh, sorry for anyone listening on their <laughs> lunch break that actually made it this far. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. I'm just impressed. You know what you signed up for when you listen to this. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just part of it. Um, but if you want like a a more, I guess relatable story like celebrities are just like us like mm-hmm. i think your wife was the one who brought up that Kristen bell got it too yeah oh uh and, and she mentioned like her daughter got it and she has like two kids i'm surprised mm-hmm. her other kid didn't get it or her husband it was just her and her daughter were the only ones who got it 50 percent mm-hmm. um kind of fits with the statistics right there and the treatment she mentioned was drinking some kind of chalky liquid that they got over the counter, which is not what we would use, but that's also what was mentioned in Bob's Burgers too. Yeah, is that they both use some kind of over the counter liquid medication. Well, by the time they're getting to you, mm-hmm. I mean, most likely, I mean, you're an ER doctor. Mm-hmm. Most likely, they're at the point where they're worried that it's where it's enough of a discomfort issue. You would think so, but it's not always the fact. You know, like it could be just started mm-hmm. it, th- there's a huge spectrum it could be like it just started or they noticed a mass of worms coming okay. out of the butt at that point uh, be, because of the fact that not everyone who goes to the emergency room has access to care outside of emergency care yeah so usually if you showed up to my er with that kind of complaint i have to look down there and mm-hmm. the other part the other differential diagnosis of pinworms is something that was mentioned in the episode can you guess what it was? Um, no, I, I. So Linda says, "Did you wipe properly?" Oh, okay. So it's not so much did you wipe everything away, but did you leave something behind after you wipe? And that's actually one of the most common other things people get confused with pinworms is bits of toilet paper being stuck in there. Oh, okay. So it's not like a diaper rash, but it's con- leftover confetti. Correct. And if, if you think about it, if you wipe your butt and there's like some moisture and you kind of roll off some pieces of toilet paper on your butt, it'll curl up and look string-like like pinworm. I hate this episode. <laughs> I hate this episode. <laughs> this is, uh, again, I think this ties back to um, human centipede. My mm-hmm. life has a lot to do with poop. As much as I hate it, like I deal with poop way too much. Life is poop and then you die. Yeah, pretty much. And that is what's going on with this episode. Okay. And so going back to the treatment, usually we don't use that chalky substance. We use something called like albendazole and you treat twice over a month. Mm -hmm. And that usually does it. It's like one dose. It's a pill, but you can crush it up and give it to kids. And I rarely tell them to use the -the over-the-counter medications. I usually just prescribe them this medication because it works better. And and because, well, frankly, if they're there with you, they can get a prescription. Yeah. You can get an anti-parasitic medication. That works. Uh, So... One of the symptoms that Gene had was that he was scooching his butt around the carpet like, you know, like a dog with worms. Yeah. I I mean, he's in middle school or, you know, like 11 to, I don't know exactly how old he is. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing that that would be something that you'd see from younger kids. Yeah. And this is that why it gets on the carpet? Potentially. Or they just sit on the carpet Bare butt. Mm-hmm. Um, bottomless businessman. Bottomless businessman style. Um, there's many. Or they eat and they just drop stuff on the ground. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, or eat and lick their fingers. I mean, and then- one of the, the treatments or prevention methods for it is making sure you take a bath every morning. Um, changing your underwear. And Gene does not strike me as a <laughs> underwear person. But that is actually one of the, the treatment um, or control vectors. Is change your, change your underwear more than... Once a week. Once quarterly. (laughs) Yeah. And wash everything in hot water to really kill the parasitic worms. Mm. You can also, inversely, if you put them at below minus two degrees Celsius, you can kill the worms that way too. So if you don't want to ruin your clothes by washing them in hot water, you can just stick them in the freezer freezer with the ice cream. Correct. (laughs) Don't do that. Not medical advice. Don't at least use a baggie. And I'm not the doctor here for those who aren't aware of this. (laughs) Anything I'm saying here is wrong. Except for that. Double bag it. Uh, but yeah, you can actually kill it with cold. Not an ideal way, 
mainly because it takes long. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say it'd be a overnight or longer yeah, thing. Just get a bag of quarters. Go to if you don't want to wor- ruin your laundry machine, if you're in that kind of situation, go to the laundromat. Throw it all in there. Hot hot water. I mean, the hot water is gonna kill them anyway. Yeah, you can you can also just run a hot water load afterwards. Yeah, and. You're just laughing at the word load. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and, or, or, you know, toss, run an empty bleach cycle. Yeah. Afterwards. But pretty much the whole family demonstrates all the ways to get it. Mm-hmm. You know, Lindo is kissing him on the mouth and sharing food with him, Lady in the Tram style. Um, Tina high fived him after going to the bathroom. Bob for wearing the shoes. Yeah. Bob touched shoes that he touched. And then, and then, Touch his mustache because anyone with a mustache knows that you touch your face constantly. Correct. And this is not one of those, you know, situations where it's like a public health crisis Mm -hmm. where we're taught not to touch our face, but it's the same kind of ideals, right? It's a public annoyance crisis. It is, but it's the same ideals. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. um, Be clean. Mm -hmm. I mean, not hard to follow. Are, are there any serious complications that could come from pinworms? From healthy people, I don't believe so. Like if you have, like, if you're immunocompromised, there's always a chance it can like overrun mm-hmm. your system. Um, it can cause bowel perforation if the worm load might be too high. Oh wow! Only if it's like significant, but it's hard to. And most of the time, their life cycle is so short it shouldn't cause an issue. Like their uh-huh. life cycle is only 14 days. Um, you can self inoculate, whereas and they give birth and burrow back into your mucosa and kind of go around like uh-huh. that. But for the most part, it's it shouldn't cause that much of an issue. Okay. It's more of an annoyance, like you've mentioned. Um, and there's not a chance because you're when you're getting infested, you're getting infested with the eggs and not the actual parasitic, something like a mosquito, so it's not going to spread a bloodborne disease from, it from sh- host to host in the same way. It shouldn't. Um, most of the time, it's just that. Uh, I'm looking at to see if there's any other complications from pinworm of, um, infections. Very rare cases it can cause UTIs. Ugh. Mainly that, because that, that I, I, I'm guessing that would be more in frequent women. in women. Yeah, yeah, because of the anatomy. Yeah, like it can go from one entrance, well, exit, and then enter. Right. For enter. a guy, you'd have to be really bad at wiping for that to happen. Actually, or just scratch and scratch. Yeah. And then, I hate this episode. <laughs> I hate this. It can also cause significant abdominal pain. Um, and then in really, really significant situations, it can rob your essential nutrients, which can cause weight loss. Okay. So, But not in the same same sense that like a tapeworm where it's, it causes it's, severe weight. Yeah. You need like a massive amount of worms to cause you to have those issues. So, yeah. Okay. This is a gross episode. This is a gross episode. <laughs> uh, yeah. This, this one's getting a warning. Um, does it does it need a warning? Uh, I would feel better if I was listening uh, to know that hey, uh, this is a this is a poop and infestation. We're gonna talk. Episode. We're gonna talk a lot about icky worms. And yeah. Stuff. So yeah, this one's getting a warning. You've already heard it by the time you've gotten this far in this episode. Yeah, I mean, I think that is that is fair. Um, worms are creepy, mm-hmm. but you know, whenever you hear that you might have worms, it's always a concerning scary thing because it's something that should not be living inside you living inside you and that is always a freaky scary thing so yeah (laughs) that's all i can say about it like talking about this episode is making me itchy (laughs) um so next time if you see someone sitting in their chair kind of squirming really weird are they nervous or is it pinworms who knows oh man that that right there is another reason to keep uh keep offices remote for as long as possible. I mean, you can't. I, can't, I will can't say, catch room, worms over Zoom. I haven't seen a case of pinworms in a little while. That's probably correlates. I, I'm sure it does. Kids aren't going to school. Kids aren't hanging out after school. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen seen that in a little bit. But I will say, when I leave the room and the nurses ask me what's wrong with that kid, and I just go worms immediately heebie-jeebies yeah everybody uh, not as bad as scabies if i said scabies it's a lot scarier but worms worms will get that too yep Blah. i do have an important question obviously the human centipede mm-hmm. bills itself as 100 percent medically accurate yep uh if that's the case how medically accurate is bob's burgers season 11 episode 2 worms of endearment which by the way is a great freaking title endearment 
Enrearment. Worms of Enrearment. I did get the title wrong. You're yep. right. Okay. It's even better. It's pretty accurate. Just kind of mentioning um, how worms are spread and just how insidiously that that idea that you might have worms to making you feel itchy. Mm-hmm. It's such a thing that's relatable too. that even though they might not even have the symptoms and they just go like, "Uh oh, I think I have them now, too. Very, very accurate, especially in the medical world. Like when we hear those things, everyone starts feeling those symptoms. Um, What did I give midsummer? It's like midsummer. Midsummer, uh, I think you you said 300 to 400. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I wrote down on here. So. Yeah, you said 300, then you upped it to 400. I'll say 350. All right. I mean, it's, it's very accurate. Like. The only part that I would say is not accurate is the Worm Symphony when she was singing the butt worm song. But that was all a fantasy, kind of like the Blood Eagle. Yeah. Also, worst way to scratch your butt is on another person's butt. Because you're not actually scratching the part that no. actually is going to itch. There's no scratching. It's just rubbing. Yeah. And rubbing just makes it worse because you're basically going to potentially rub that onto the clothes, which then if, if Linda has to do the laundry, then she's going to get on her hands. And if she doesn't wash her hands... Reinfection. So the best method that they used was the spaghetti spoon. Oh, surprisingly, as long as they don't share it around and then they wash it in hot water afterward. Not medical advice. <laughs> <laughs> that is what that that is now permanent butt scratcher. <laughs> Honestly. Um, also, we do not recommend. Cu- uh, we're, we're going to not sell communal butt scratchers <laughs> as uh, podcast merch. That reminds me of the poop knife story. Yeah. Do you know the poop knife story? I know the poop knife story. I don't think people have poop knives. I mean, if you need a poop knife. We're going to add the poop knife uh, story in the show notes uh, to that classic Reddit thread. Oh, God. You should not be using a poop knife. If you can clog a toilet with your own poop, you're constipated. Like, that is bad. And I've learned from this, from doing this show, that constipation is a state of being and not a uh, single instance. Correct. That is very true. It is... It's not so much how often you go, it's what, what it looks like. Yeah. And that's what I tell every patient. But constipated kids can get uh, pinworms and then sometimes confuse their constipation symptoms with pinworms. Because they think, oh, my butt itches because I'm constipated. Correct. Or I can't go because it hurts or itchy uh-huh. because they got worms. So it's like chicken or the egg kind of situation. And then they might be scared to poop. The after pinworm that. or the egg. <sighs> yes. But it can also lead to kids being constipated in the future because they're afraid to poop because the last time they pooped, they saw something yeah. squirming out. So it's, it can cause that kind of effect too. So yeah, there's nothing I want to change about this episode. Yeah, th- nothing we could do to make it more medically no, accurate. It's, this is a good family viewpoint on what pinworms are like and how it kind of affects a family. Before we wrap this up, I actually did have a question from the last scene where everyone took the medicine mm-hmm. and uh, Louise took it as kind of a prophylactic. Yeah. And my question was going to be, should she be taking that over-the-counter medicine when she doesn't have the symptoms? But then you said that symptoms don't show to 7 to 14 days, yeah. so she probably would be showing, you know, just because they live in yeah. close proximity and we're making hamster slides yeah. together. I probably would have just had her take it. Mm-hmm. And the fact that it it's over-the-counter, which means it's probably benign anyways, and it's not going to cause any significant injury unless they overdose on it, I think that's fine. And the risk benefit kind of situation, the risk of her not taking that nasty taking tasting medicine, she might get worms. The benefit is it might stop her from getting worms. I think, yeah. I think it out, the benefit outweighs the risk by a lot in this situation. So, yeah, I probably if I was her, I probably would have taken it, too. OK, especially if you saw how your whole family was like scooching around like a dog. Yeah. And whatnot. I probably would be like, just give me the medicine. I really don't want to have an itchy butthole. The technical term is pruritus ani. That's the title of this episode. Pruritus ani. The title. The technical term is pruritus ani. It is. That was the name of our intramural fly football team uh, <laughs> in medical school. I kid you not. But yeah, that is actually what it. What is the term for it? ani? Makes sense. Pruritus mm-hmm. just means itchy. All right. Yeah. Um, with that, I'm so glad to be done with this episode. <laughs> Thank you, everyone who made it this far. Uh, next week, I don't know what we'll be be discussing, but it's not going to involve infestations. That's what you think. Oh, man. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you're new, check out the back episodes, and please tell your friends about it. You know, best, best way to spread the word about, it. just like spreading worms, 
Word of mouth. Word of mouth. Tell tell your friends. Review us on uh, Apple and all yeah, those other I, places. I, I, iTunes, Stitcher, all those fun places. Yep. And thank you for getting us to number 77 on the medical podcast charts in the U.S. on yeah. Apple. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thanks, folks. We'll be back next week with uh, something less wormy. Bye-bye.